The final countdown. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, this is it. The final countdown, the final push, the final judgment, the final frontier of my week-long celebration of my favorite music of the 2010s, my end of the decade spectacularish, a couple months late, sure, but hey, you're going to get it when you're going to get it from me. But uh, yeah, this has been an amazing week, uh, a lot of hard work, and uh, hopefully yesterday's video wasn't too terribly long. Uh, to be honest, as I speak this, I have not edited any of this week's videos yet. But uh, yeah, I had more to say about each of the bottom 70 albums in this list uh, than I thought I did. So as I said, hopefully that video isn't too long, and hopefully you stuck around for it and watched it. and. Uh, found some stuff you might not have been aware of and might be uh, inclined to check out. But yes, today's video is the cream of the crop for the decade, my top 30 favorite albums of the 2010s. Uh, I hope you enjoy this list as much as you enjoyed all the other videos this week. Uh, a couple things I said at the beginning of yesterday's video, but in case you didn't stick around for that one, I'll say them again quickly. This list is not meant to be all-encompassing or definitive or authoritative in any way, shape, or form. Uh, first of all, I couldn't listen to everything that came out in the last decade, and there were a few things that I didn't care to listen to from the last decade. So uh, the titles on this list and their rankings are not determined by any critical criteria such as innovative production or melodic inventiveness or lyrical profundity or cultural impact. They are quite simply just the albums released during between January 2010 and December 2019 that I most enjoyed. That is, that's it. That's for this list. Uh, that's why I call it my favorite albums of the decade instead of the best albums of the decade. So yes, you are sure to be puzzled and bewildered by how highly or how lowly some of the items on this list ranked. Uh, and I'm sure there are some things that will surprise you, some things that will not surprise you uh, ending up on my top tier list. And hopefully there are some things you never will have heard of before that you will be intrigued by how highly I rank them and uh, enticed to check them out on your own. But uh, yeah, I thought going into the making this decade list, I was naive and thought that it was going to be as simple as, you know, laying out my top 20 or 25 albums of each year and then, you know, just kind of shuffling the rankings together, like taking all my number one albums, putting them in... Uh, the order of preference, then my number two albums, and basically being like that. Uh, I, I, I like to put them out, as you can see on these photos, I like to put them out on my bed, lay them out uh, in order of wh uh, where I thought they ranked each year. And so, but yeah, I was ended up being very surprised at how the list evolved and how I changed my mind on some of these albums uh, for the better or for the worse. So yes, hopefully you will find this as intriguing as I did uh, in checking out these albums and ranking them in the order that I did. But anyway, I prattled on long enough. I'm sure the suspense is killing you, so let me just get on with it and reveal my list of my top 30 favorite albums of the 2010s. Starting off the list at number 30 is Snapshot, the debut album by The Stripes. This was a an Irish quartet of... Uh, they, they started out more as a blues rock, uh, with a blues rock sound, but they ended on more of a uh, an indie rock kind of a thing. Yeah, they, they started at the beginning of the decade, and they split up before the decade was over, so we only got three albums out of them but they were some great albums. And yeah, blues rock is not normally my thing, but for some reason this first album, I mean, they, they got me in right with this first album. It's it's fantastic. It's mostly original songs, uh, but they do do a handful of uh, covers. Uh, you Can't Judge a Book by the Cover is one of the classics, and uh, I'm a Hog for You Baby, as well as uh, Heart of the City, which I think is a Nick Lowe song, if I can't remember the credits uh, off the top of my head. But yeah, this was just a great album. If you kind of like that, blues indie rock garage rock kind of thing and you haven't tried the stripes out before uh give them a try yeah they were a un unfortunately short-lived but very uh excellent band coming in at number 29 is colin hay with his album fierce mercy and yes uh, you probably knew that colin hay was going to be on my list somewhere i'm kind of surprised though that this is the only appearance on my list uh, by colin hay i've been a fan of his for uh, decades. Uh, he started out, of course, with the new wave band Men at Work during the 80s, but after they broke up, he went on to a solo career and has been going ever since for, what, 30 years, 35 years. He's been doing his thing. Uh, very singer-songwriter kind of stuff, a little bit of an Americana feel, which is a little weird because he is uh, Australian and Irish? Scottish? Yeah, Australian-Scottish. 
but yeah, this album is just right up there with uh, all the rest of his albums. Uh, Come Tumbling Down is the uh, lead-off track, and it's excellent. I'm Inside Outside In, which is a, a very clever song, and A Thousand Million Reasons, um, The Last to Know, The Best in Me. I mean, the list goes on of great songs on this album, uh, and yet this is Colin Hay in top form, which he, he rarely slips out of top form, honestly. So uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out Colin Hay, you've got to check him out. Number 28 on my list is Rumor with her debut album Seasons of My Soul. Now what I love about Rumor is her voice. I mean she's got an absolutely gorgeous sparkling singing voice. Uh, she draws a lot of comparisons to Karen Carpenter and for good reason. I mean she is in my opinion one of the best singing voices to come along since Karen Carpenter in the 70s. So but yeah this uh, you could pick any song off this album and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, kind of like the cover art. I mean the cover art really conveys the feel of the album. Uh, she does some great stuff on here. Aretha is one of the best songs on here, and that is, as you can imagine, it's a, a tribute in a way to Aretha Franklin, uh, but but before she passed away. This was done back in uh, early in the decade. But yeah, a gorgeous album if you love uh, female vocalists who really just absolutely shine and sparkle uh, on, you know, slow kind of 70s AM radio pop songs. You gotta check out Rumor. She's just fantastic. My 27th favorite album of the decade is Communion by Years and Years. This was their debut album, and this is just some great, uh, top-rate, uh, 80s synthwave-inspired stuff. You can't go wrong with this album. I mean, I, I've lost track of the number of songs, and there are so many good ones that I cannot remember them uh, by their titles alone. King is one I'm sure I really enjoyed, and uh, another one called Shine. And then Eyes Shut is a fantastic song as well. So front to back, this album is just fantastic. If you love 80s synthwave, uh, Communion by Years and Years is just fantastic, not to be missed. My number 26 pick is Inflorescent by Friendly Fires. This was my first exposure to the group, and I have uh, Garrett over at Young Entertainment Specialist to thank for this. I had never heard of these guys before, and he just sung this album's praises, pun intended, uh, quite profusely in his uh, review of it last year. And if you watched my albums of the year for 2019, you saw that it ranked in my top three, I believe. And just, yeah, I just absolutely love this. Just one uh, sonic party after another from front to back on this album. Just excellent feel-good pop music of the highest order. It's just fantastic. My number 25 pick is Strangeland by Keen. Now this is actually my lowest ranked number one pick for its respective year. Uh, you know, when I laid out my albums each year in preparation for this list, this one landed at number one for the year of 2012. And 2012 was a very meaningful year for me. Uh, in terms of music and other things, because it was the year in which my sister passed away. And so because of that event, a lot of albums from the year 2012 have a special uh, meaning for me. And this was one of them, obviously. And I don't know if I'd consider it my favorite Keen album, but it was, you know, as I said, it has a, a very uh, significant meaning for me. Uh, Silenced by the Night is one of the best ones on here. Watch How You Go was very, very meaningful for me as well as uh, On the Road is uh, one of the uh, more upbeat songs, and it's just incredibly catchy. But yeah, pretty much every song on here. Uh, Neon River is another fantastic one. I mean, you can't go wrong with this album, uh, but yeah, it's just, it just has a very, very special meaning for me. Coming in at number 24 on my list is Little Windows by Teddy Thompson and Kelly Jones. And this was actually my runner-up album for the year of 2016. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, for one thing, I've been a fan of Teddy Thompson for many, many years. And so that's really what drew my attention to this. But also, there's something I love about vocal harmonies between a man and a woman. Men's and women's voices blended together. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And these two have vocal harmonies in absolute spades. I mean, it's just there's just something about their chemistry together that just elevates this album to a whole new level. Uh, overall, this has a bit of a uh, classic country throwback kind of a sound. But, and it's, it's a very short album. I mean, it has 10 songs, and the longest song on here is just over three minutes. So it's over in a flash. It's short and very, very sweet. But uh, yeah, Make a Wish on Me is my favorite song off the album. Uh, and But the lead-off track, Never Knew You Loved Me Too, was fantastic. Uh, I mean, I, I could name pretty much every song on here, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. A can't-miss album, especially if you love male-female vocal harmonies. Ranked at number 23 on my list is Troy Sivan's debut album, Blue Neighborhood. Now, you heard me talk about Troy earlier. His uh, sophomore album was further down in my countdown. But this one is just, it's equally gorgeous. I mean, as I said earlier, his voice has got this fragile, heartbreaking beauty to it. 
in a way. This, you just can't describe. I, I can't describe it better than that. Uh, although the uh, cover of this album kind of brings home the message. It's a really good depiction of of this album's mood. You know, it's it's got this pastel beauty to it, but there are dark clouds in the background. So that kind of brings it home. And uh, uh, Lost Boy is probably my, my favorite song in the album. And uh, Talk Me Down has a, just a heartbreaking message in the lyrics. Oh, and this album is also how I found out about Betty Who. Uh, he collaborated with Betty Who on one of the tracks on this album, so that's kind of what drew me to that artist. Uh, she's also further down in my countdown, You, if you saw my last video. So, but yeah, I'm, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Troy's voice just drew me in. There's something about it that just drew me in instantly, and I get this ethereal quality out of his voice that I just, I don't hear in any other artist, any other vocalist, anywhere. Moving on to number 22 on my list, we have The Click Five with their album TCV. Yes, these guys take the award for the band that I most like with the silliest name. Yes, I, I, I still cringe a bit at their name, but this album, I'm telling you, if you like seriously hooky, power pop, slightly new wave uh, influenced stuff, you've got to listen to this album. I mean, it's like every single song on here has a hook that will stick in your head. I mean, I could list any song on here. Uh, the Way It Goes, Nobody's Business is probably my favorite on here, and uh, Fever for Shaken. Oh, gosh. The World Comes Crawling Back. I Quit, I Quit, I Quit is another one. I mean, just listen to the whole album if you can find it. on. I mean, I'm sure it's on Spotify or something, but yeah. Fantastically hooky stuff, and when I go over the track listing on here, I kind of wish I'd rank it higher, but hey, there are just so many darn good albums on here that yeah, I had to keep this one out of the top 20 just because of the quality of everything else coming up, but yeah check this album out. If you love hooks, check this album out. Fantastic. Number 21 on my list is Oklahoma by Keb Moe. Now, I've sung this album's praises a couple of times over the past year. I did a Now and Then video in which I featured this album as well as one of his earlier ones, and of course he was ranked at, I believe, number four in my 2019 countdown. And just listen to it and you'll be able to tell why. I mean, just a fantastic, uh, what my favorite contemporary blues artist ever and uh, this album went a long way toward winning me over. This is a fantastic arrangement of songs here. Uh, he features Roseanne Cash on the song Put a Woman in Charge, which hey, it's a an end of the patriarchy anthem that I can totally get behind. But uh, yeah, the song Oklahoma, and I go into detail on those previously mentioned videos as to uh, the connection I feel to this album is uh, a connection to a very good friend of mine that I've made through YouTube. So this album in that way kind of symbolizes my connection to him, and that's one of the reasons why I am just so incredibly fond of this album. Uh, again, I, I kind of hesitated to put it uh, outside the top 20, but hey, it was just barely outside the top 20. But yeah, I, I absolutely love this album. What can I say? Okay, so you heard me in the beginning of this video talk about uh, albums you may never have heard of appearing in this countdown. Well, this is one of them. My number 20 pick is Contrast by Connor Maynard. And this is an album that I probably shouldn't have liked as much as I did, but uh, it's, I just it just hooked me in. Uh, what can I say? The the hooks in this album are just incredible. This is um, R&B flavored pop music. Uh, this is it's kind of a throwback to um, turn of the millennium boy band pop in a way. Uh, you know, In Sync, Backstreet Boys, and that kind of thing. But uh, this guy he just does it incredibly well and. It breaks my heart that this actually so far has been, I think, his only album of original material released thus far. And this was back in 2012, I think. But yeah, uh, Pharrell Williams and Neo and Rita Ora make appearances on this album. Uh, but it's just this is just a set of impeccably crafted uh, R&B flavored pop tunes. Uh, Turnaround is one of my favorites. That's, one, that's the one that features Neo. And uh, Takeoff is one of my favorites. It's it's a, a not so guilty pleasure. This whole album is basically a not so guilty pleasure. So, yeah, if you like the R and B flavored pop that you might have heard back in the as I said in the turn of the millennium, the early two thousands, uh, check this album out. Uh, I could name the whole track list. What can I say? Fantastic pop R and B album. Coming in at number nineteen on my list is Caustic Love by Paolo Nutini. Yes, I love this guy so much, I had to put one of his albums in my top 20 for the decade. Uh, it's just fantastic. And this is actually his most recent album, and it was done back in 2014. Paolo, where's your new album? You're killing me here. Come on. But yeah, this is just great. It ranks right up there with both of his other two albums. Uh, I mean, the guys, this is one guy who's very, been very, very consistent, in my opinion. Uh, consistently likable stuff. He does uh, singer-songwriter pop with a little bit of a uh, funk twist. An, an excellent guy. I mean, you've got to hear his music, and he's got one of those, uh, another idiosyncratic voice that I like, a bit bit scru scruffy and scratchy, but it totally makes uh, the songs for me. The 
lead off track scream funk my life up is just great and but my favorite song on this album and my favorite paolo nutini song ever is cherry blossom fantastic song and he has a feature with janelle monet on here on a song called fashion and uh, iron sky is another great song so yeah if you have never bothered checking out paolo nutini you've got to check him out and hey you might as well start with this album right coming in at number 18 is momentum by jamie cullum and yes i've talked about jamie cullum before as well uh he's uh, one of my favorite uh, jazz leaning artists, just a fantastic guy. Although he only his output during the 2010s was kind of sparse, just two albums of uh, all or partial original material and one covers album is all he did over the course of the decade. But this was his best of the decade and just fantastic. And again, one of the reasons I like Jamie Cullum is kind of like with Paolo Nutini, he's got a, a bit of a scruffy voice, a little rough around the edges voice, with just a little bit of a slur which, you know, as I said, and adds to his charm. But yeah, just a bunch of great songs on here, some fantastic originals like Edge of Something. And uh, he covers one of my favorite show tunes or, or classic pop songs, Pure Imagination. I love that song, and he does it justice on here. But yeah, just fa a fantastic album from top to bottom. Uh, yeah, check out Jamie Cullum if you haven't yet. My number 17 favorite album of the decade, and this is another artist that uh, you have, I don't think you've heard me talk about yet on this channel. It is Eric Hassel with his album Pieces. This guy is a Swedish uh, artist, and I think he's done more songwriting and producing than he's done actual recording under his own name. And if you want, if you are looking for um, synth pop music, you know, Euro pop, basically, with, that is just packed with hooks and will stick in your ears forever, this album is it. I mean, every single song on this album, I, I can recall the melody in my head. Uh, some of my favorites, though, are uh, Isn't It Obvious? That's a great, great song. Uh, Standing Where You Left Me is a fantastic hooky song that, that will stick in your head for, for days, weeks. Love Me to Pieces is possibly my favorite song on the album. But yeah, just from top to bottom, this album just kicks ass. It's just fantastic. Yeah, so yeah, check out Eric Hassel if you haven't yet. His, his stuff is just not to be missed, if, especially if you love that synth-driven Europop music. Moving on to number 16 in my list, we go from Europop to Country Pop, a Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. Uh, and I'm sure, I, I don't really need to say anything about this album. You guys, uh, I'm sure you guys have all heard it. Uh, you guys know of its praises already, and it very justifiably won Album of the Year at the Grammys last year, 2019 Grammys. But yeah, just a fantastic set of songs from top to bottom. Uh, Lonely Weekend, I love that one. Uh, uh, High Horse, that's probably my favorite on the album, as well as Space Cowboy. Hey, I could go on, but uh, you guys have probably all heard this album by now, and uh, just you are, are aware of how great an album it is, just as much as I am. But yeah, just missed my top 15, though, but still, fantastic album and one of the best of the decade. Okay, now, somebody out there is going to be very happy with this album ranking at number 15 on my list for the decade. It is Strange Desire by Bleachers. What can I say? Uh, I mentioned Bleachers. Their uh, sophomore album was uh, further down in my countdown. I fell into uh, coming aware of this band by route of the uh, Love, Simon soundtrack, one of my favorite movies of the decade. And yeah, I just this is just irresistible, great uh, synthwave-driven pop music. Uh, Roller Coaster is uh, one of my favorite songs by theirs, and uh, Wild Heart is fantastic. I love that one too. Those two songs were featured in the Love Simon soundtrack, so naturally I would glom onto those. But front to back, I mean, honestly, uh, uh, Shadow. I actually really like Shadow. It's great, and I want to get better. I could run down the entire track listing, but I will save time, and I won't. Let's just suffice to say that this is a fantastic album. I am so glad that I happened upon these guys, both by way of the Love, Simon soundtrack and also a very, very good friend of mine, Noah, uh, ranks these guys, uh, this artist, as one of his favorites of all time, So, and I can very much see why. Number 14 on my list is Hearts That Strain by Jake Bug. Now, to be honest, when Jake Bug first came out uh, and I listened to his first couple albums, he, I was really only kind of lukewarm on him at the beginning because he had much more of a Bob Dylan-esque uh, folk singer-songwriter sort of thing going on, and that's not normally my thing. But I'm so glad that I gave him some patience and listened to those albums on repeat because, honestly, I love this guy with more with every album he puts out. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, earlier on, I had a Jake Bug album in my list earlier, and I mentioned how with just about every album he brings something new to the table. Well, with this one, and this actually, this incidentally, this one was my runner-up for 2017 for its year. Uh, this one has a bit more of a 
warmer or cozier sound to it, I guess you'd say. And uh, the reason for that is uh, he recruited a bunch of veteran session musicians to back him up on here. And so it kind of gives a bit, a bit of a 60s or 70s AM radio pop rock kind of a thing, I guess. I mean, that's not to say that the lyrics are all lighthearted or anything. I mean, he's still got some, some cynical and uh, sardonic lyrics in some of the songs. But still, this is just fantastic. And in my opinion, it's Jake Bug's best album yet. And I cannot wait to see what he comes up with next. Coming in at lucky number 13 is My Name is Michael Holbrook, the latest album by Mika. And I mentioned uh, th this was another album that I did in a Now and Then video last year. You can check that out for more details. But yeah, this is another artist that has been, for me, one of the most consistent artists over his career. I, I followed him from day one with his first uh, major label album. Fantastic uh, technical or pop music. And kind of the cover art for his albums kind of gives you an idea of what to expect. Just great, great pop melodies, uh, but, uh, fun lyrics in a lot of the songs, but also some heartfelt lyrics in some songs. And this album has a great mix of both. And this actually was my number two album for number for 2019. But uh, yeah, Tiny Love is great. And uh, Blue is one of my favorite songs. It's kind of an ode to the color blue. And I could keep going on with uh, some of the great songs on here. Just fantastic album. Uh, Mika is one, in my opinion, one of those artists not to be missed if you love just great pop music. Okay, now, my number 12 album for the decade was actually my number one album for 2018. It is Walls by Barbra Streisand. And yes, this, as I mentioned in the countdown, this came as a total surprise. I never would have expected a Barbra Streisand album, for one thing, to top my list uh, of any year. But this one actually, and all, another thing is, albums with a whole lot of political content or really serious uh, subject matter wouldn't ordinarily rank so high. But this one just, uh, I was in such uh, disarray mentally because of the political climate uh, over the past, you know, ever since 2016, that I really, really needed an album like this. You know, uh, Barbara just uh, sang about what I was feeling. I mean, her lyrics in this album were just totally uh, resonated with me on an unbelievable way. And uh, they still do in, in, in many ways. And so I could not shake this album from certainly not from my top 15 and in a way I'm kind of surprised it didn't hit in my top 10 plus it's just you know she has such a gorgeous voice and fantastic arrangements and she's a wonderful wonderful artist and so I couldn't help but uh, you know what can I say this album just completely speaks to me on so many levels it's just absolutely gorgeous number 11 on my list is Paper Gods by Duran Duran yes one of my favorite artists of all time uh, unfortunately ranked just outside of the top 10 for the decade. But as I explained earlier on when one of their other albums was further down in my countdown, uh, their more recent output has just not quite uh, struck me as much as their classic uh, earlier output from like the first half of their career. But this one did rank number one for its year of 2015. So that that's saying something. But yeah, just a, a great assemblage of songs on here. Still, you know, as I said, not doesn't hold a candle to their classic uh, early output but still uh, Sunset Sunset Garage, or as they pronounce it in the lyrics, Sunset Garage is one of my favorite songs on here, as well as Pressure Off, which features Janelle Monet, along with uh, You Kill Me With Silence. That's another fantastic track on here. So uh, yeah, if you've uh, been wanting to check out Duran Duran and you haven't yet, uh, even though this album is not what I consider one of their best, uh, it's it's their best of the decade. So don't don't be shy. Check out this album if you haven't yet. Okay, finally, here we have arrived at the home stretch, the top 10. Are you ready? Neither am I, but let's start anyway. Uh, coming in at number 10, uh, and again, somebody out there, well, a different somebody, should be happy or at least satisfied with how highly I rank this album. And uh, without further ado, let's just reveal it. Number 10 is Voice Notes by Charlie Puth. What can I say? And uh, curiously, though, this one was actually my runner-up for 2018, behind Barbara Streisand's Walls. But honestly, all these months later, when all was said and done, I had to give the upper hand to this one, honestly. Uh, and not just to please my friend. This is totally sincerely my uh, decision here. And yes, I have s repeatedly sung the praises, possibly unjustifiably so, for Charlie Puth's debut album, Nine Track Mind. But as much as I like that album, this one is leaps and bounds beyond Nine Track Mind. Uh, this is as close to pop perfection as you can get, honestly. Uh, well, pop R&B perfection, I guess. He's got plenty of R&B mixed into this stuff. And Charlie's voice absolutely shines um, even better than it did on Nine Track Mind. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the songs speak for themselves, honestly. Attention and uh, how long the two big singles off this album, fantastic. Uh, and I, I have a soft spot for Boy and Slow It Down. Just two more uh, not-so-guilty pleasures of mine. And then 
even beyond that, just the, the guest features on this album. Uh, some people didn't really like Change, the song featuring uh, James Taylor. And yes, perhaps it was a little bit cheesy here and there with when it comes to the lyrics, but hey, I have, again, I have a soft spot for it. And then, of course, how can you forget the positively gorgeous a cappella song, If You Leave Me Now, featuring Boys to Men. Gorgeous. One of the top five a cappella songs of all time, in my opinion. Absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, from front to back, this album is just excellent standout. Some of the songs aren't perfect, but it's, as I said, as close to pop perfection as you can get. Just absolutely fantastic. Number nine, and uh, some of you might have seen this one coming in a way because, honestly, how could I let the decade's top ten go by without having a Weird Al Yankovic album in it? Right? I mean, hey, it's me who's talking, remember. Uh, yes, Mandatory Fun by Weird Al Yankovic is my number nine favorite album of the decade. And, and it's, it's uh, quite possibly his final studio album. Uh, he hasn't put out another one, and this is from 2014. This was actually my runner-up for 2014. Uh, but yeah, I mean, being a major word nerd, an English nerd, uh, word crimes is obviously on my on my hit list here. And then of course we have Tacky, the uh, parody of Pharrell Williams' Happy. And also Lame Claim to Fame, which was an original song, is I have a soft spot for that one. And honestly, I have a soft spot for almost every song on this album. It's Weird Al Yankovic in top form. He went out with a bang. This was his first album to hit number one on the Billboard 200. And uh, yeah, so what can I say? It's just fantastic. Uh, Al has never sounded better than this, honestly. Finishing the decade in the number eight spot on my list is Running Still by Charlie Winston. Now, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned Charlie Winston in my, on my channel before, but I've never talked about this album. In fact, I almost forgot about this one as I was building my decade list. Uh, this one, I consider this the one my runner-up for the year of 2011 when it was released. And it is just fantastic. Charlie Winston is uh, a British artist who's uh, basically a soul, a blue-eyed soul singer, you know, soul pop kind of stuff. Kind of live in the vein of, oh, James Morrison and maybe to a lesser degree uh, Jason Mraz. Not quite as uh, pop as Jason Mraz, but a little bit more soul. But this album, as you would expect, being in my top ten, is just packed with great songs. One of the most amazing ones is called Speak To Me, that's track two on here, and it is done entirely by, in a cappella, even the percussion and stuff, so it is just it is just amazing to hear. you got to listen to that one. And uh, the first track, Hello Alone, uh, is that uh, shows his sense of humor. He's, he talks about uh, loneliness being an old friend of his, you know, that he's familiar with, and he invites into his home sort of thing, so that's got a great, great sound to it. And uh, Where Can I Buy Happiness, that's another great song, and that has much more of a blue-eyed soul kind of a thing that's... Uh, I'm trying to think of who the artist on that one reminds me of, and I can't think of him right now, sorry. And there's another one here called uh, Rockin' in the Suburbs, and that is not a cover of the uh, Ben Fold song. This is a totally original song, and it's really, really cool. Just very striking. Great hooks, great uh, arrangements and stuff on this album from front to back. Fantastic. If, you've, if you have not checked out this album, particularly by Charlie Winston, Running Still, you got to check it out. It's fantastic. Number seven on my end of the decade list is Colors by Beck. And I consider this one my number one album of 2017, even though uh, at the time I did my end of the year list for 2017, a different album was number one. Uh, it's because I discovered this album after that. And it's, as you can see, it completely won me over. Yes, perhaps it's a controversial choice because this is not the most critically acclaimed Beck album or the most uh, substantial Beck album, but this is the one that basically won me over uh, with Beck. It, it got me to start collecting his albums again. I had tried Beck out many years ago and just couldn't get into him, but this album totally sold me, and it is just absolutely a synth-drenched album. It's very, very reminiscent of 80s synth pop, and that's one reason I love it so much. Just, you know, one song after another. I mean, the, the opener of the title track, Colors, is fantastic. Seventh Heaven is amazing. Uh, I'm So Free. I'm So Free has more of a classic Beck sound, uh, so so that's you know, it's, it's one of the more striking songs for me. But yeah, I mean, wow and dreams and it's like every single song on this album is just absolutely fantastic i love it and it was very much worth uh, me picking up the vinyl edition of it as well i loved it that much so uh maybe some other uh, people would consider different albums to be more uh more meaningful but th for me this one just totally walks away with the best beck album of the decade for me Coming in at number six is Tales of America by J.S. Ondara. Now, this was my number one album of 2019. Uh, if you saw my 2019 year-end list, absolutely fantastic. This truly elevates music to an art form. J.S. Ondara is a Kenyan, I believe, immigrant to the U.S. 
Uh, and this is Tales of America, as I said in my uh, uh, recap on my year-end list. This is Tales about America that only an immigrant could tell, and it's just absolutely fantastic. Reminiscent of uh, Tracy Chapman, but obviously it's a guy. Uh, but yeah, it's just absolutely aching, achingly gorgeous songs on here. Uh, American Dream is the lead-off track. That's just fantastic. Turkish Bandana is gorgeous. Master O'Connor, uh, again, you know, just like all these other songs in this top ten, I could, you know, pick a song and you'll wind up with a winner. It's just absolutely gorgeous and very, very, very worthy of being in my top ten albums of the decade. Okay, kicking off the top five in my list of my favorite albums of the 2010s. Uh, this is an artist I know I've talked about before, but I don't know that I've ever mentioned this specific album before, and it's about time that I do. It is The Bright Spots by Randall Bramlett. Uh, this was my number one album for 2013, its year of release, and Randall Bramlett is basically a uh, uh, southern rock uh, Americana singer-songwriter type of guy. It's fantastic. Uh, he's been uh, doing music since the 70s. He's been recording since the 70s. This is his, what, 13th, 14th album? And I, I just I just love the guy. He's fantastic. Uh, my favorite song on here, and one of my favorite songs of the entire decade, is John the Baptist, uh, partly because it has a sitar front and center, and you know how much I like the sitar. And then we have uh, the opening track, uh, Roll, is fantastic, and its follow-up track, Every Saint. Uh, Till the Party's All Gone, and whatever that is, whatever that is, is a very good demonstration of his sense of humor. He's got a great sense of humor, as a lot of southern rock and country and Americana artists tend to. But yeah, just, this is just a fantastic album. If you've never checked out Randall Brand, but I highly recommend starting with this album, his best of the decade. My number four favorite album of the decade is actually my number one favorite album of its release year of 2011. It is Bella by Teddy Thompson. Now, I discovered Teddy Thompson by way of Rufus Wainwright. Uh, Teddy has appeared on several of Rufus Wainwright's albums over the years, and actually they've reciprocated uh, once or twice. Uh, Rufus has appeared on some of Teddy's albums. Uh, but yeah, that's how I first found out about Teddy Thompson, and you know, after hearing him on several Rufus songs, I checked out Teddy's own stuff, and I just became hooked as soon as I heard it. Just fantastic. This is his fourth or fifth album, I believe. And uh, he actually hasn't put out a solo album since this one, 2011. Uh, he did put out the uh, collaborative album with Kelly Jones that I mentioned a little bit ago. That's just gorgeous. But this one, he's kind of a, a singer-songwriter type of uh, artist with just a little bit of country Americana kind of stuff in it. Just a little touch of that. Otherwise, he's basically pop rock. And he's got a lot of... Uh, sardonic or, or uh, self-deprecating and wry sense of humor in a lot of his songs, uh, which in that way kind of makes him a little bit like uh, Randall Bramlett. But yeah, Looking for a Girl and also The One I Can't Have are both kind of uh, show his sense of humor a little bit self-deprecating, as I said. And uh, Tell Me What You Want is actually a duet, but not with Kelly Thompson, but with another uh, female, vocal, female vocalist. And then uh, Delilah is an absolutely gorgeous ballad, but you know, as I keep saying with all these albums from top to bottom, just great, great songs. And uh, yeah, if you have not checked out Teddy Thompson yet, I urge you to. He's just, uh, he is not to be missed. He's fantastic. Okay, here we go into the final three. My number three selection was actually my top pick of the year 2010 when it was released. It is When Everything Breaks Open by Matt Morris. Now, you probably don't recognize the name unless you happen to have uh, watched the Mickey Mouse Club back in the 90s. Matt Morris is an alum of the Mickey Mouse Club along with Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, and naturally he is friends with Justin, and Justin actually helped co-produce this album. So uh, in that respect, you can hear a lot of Justin Timberlake's influence on it. It's got some R&B and uh, electronica dance-type elements, but not a whole lot. At its core, this is a singer-songwriter album, and it covers a lot of topical ground here, a lot of philosophical stuff. Uh, Matt Morris is actually a fairly religious person, and that, but that doesn't come across really strongly in the in the lyrics. Uh, you know, there's it's just kind of a subtext. You know, he's he can tell he's a spiritual guy, but uh, still, you can get a lot out of these songs. It's it's it is the most lyrically substantial album in my top five by far. Uh, money, the name of that song would uh, kind of is self-explanatory. It talks about the evils of money. Uh, the Un-American is a very interesting song. I mean, that has some bitingly uh, satirical and topical lyrics for. Uh, uh, socio-political stuff that's been happening uh, in the the decade of the 2010s and but it's also got some love songs as well uh, you do it for me is a seriously funky song that is by far the catchiest track on the albums I I just absolutely loved it love it it's it's one that's you're gonna tap your toe or bob your knee to it uh, if you don't you're just dead inside honestly but yeah just uh, 
every single song on this album is worth listening to. Uh, just uh, you got to check it out. It's absolutely fantastic and uh, is uh, very worthy of my top three selections for the entire decade. And on we go to the runner-up in my list for album of the decade. It was my number one selection for the year 2016. It is In My Room by Jacob Collier. This guy is a jazz prodigy. He is fantastic. He's a British artist, and he was only in his early 20s, I think, when he recorded this album. And it is just, it's something to hear. And also seeing him live in concert is a spectacle to behold. It is just, you it boggles your mind watching this guy perform. And just listening to this, he, he layers stuff and does chord progressions that you wouldn't believe. It's just amazing. Uh, he had ba was basically a protege you know, of sorts uh, of Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones basically discovered this guy and uh, brought him to the attention of the world and uh, helped him out on this album. It's just fantastic, amazing. And he's uh, so many veteran jazz artists have sung the praises of Jacob Collier, and for darn good reason. I mean, uh, he does a cover of In My Room, the uh, Beach Boys song, as well as a cover of the theme song to the Flintstones, which is one of the obviously one of the lighter moments on this album. It's cute and fun, but so many of the uh, uh, otherwise, you know, except for those two tracks, otherwise everything else is originals. And uh, Down the Line is one of my favorites. And uh, Woke Up Today, the opening track is fantastic. Hideaway is gorgeous. I mean, if you've got an open mind and just are willing to go on an audio exploratory journey, having no expectations of what you're going to hear. Uh, put Jacob Collier's In My Room on. And, I mean, I've, I've gotten the uh, guys, most of the guys' uh, other albums since then, but none of them have struck me, me nearly as much as In My Room. And it is, uh, I almost put it at number one, but there's another album that's just uh, that much better than this. But honestly, essentially, you pretty much can't get better, particularly with jazz, than you can with Jacob Collier's In My Room. Okay, this is it. Are you ready? Well, I can come back tomorrow. Uh, some of you might be expecting this album uh, based on how close attention you've been paying and what's been on my list thus far and what hasn't and on my past videos. Uh, but suffice to say, this was my number one pick for the year of 2014, uh, which was actually the first uh, albums of the year list that I did on my channel. But anyway, without further ado, let me reveal my number one favorite album of the 2010s. It is Pompadour by Wouter Hamill. Yes, uh, I've had two Wouter Hamill albums on my list uh, up to this point. This is the third, and for good reason. He was my favorite artist of the 2010s, as I mentioned a couple of days ago. Fantastic album. I mean, the, the array of sounds this guy has on the album, for one thing. Uh, the opening track, The Lights, is kind of an EDM dance pop type, type of song. Very heavy on the synths. And then he's got, uh, way down almost at the end of the album, Gretna Green is sounds like vintage Elton John. And you know, he's also got some, you know, a uh, uh, a kind of Tin Pan Alley pop here and there, and uh, just so much more like uh, 60s or 70s kind of pop, almost disco stuff in a way. It's just, just he does such a wide range of songs on this album. And also, when I per first put this album on, every single song, uh, I was not in the slightest disappointed in any of the songs on this album. They're just one song after another. Every single song on this album was fantastic. I have listened to this album more more times than I can count, and I never ever get tired of it. This is just fantastic pop of the highest form, in my opinion. Uh, yes, Wouter Hamill, if you guys don't know uh, by now, is a Dutch jazz pop artist. Started out with much more of a jazz, jazz sound, and on this album he's almost gone full bore pop. And uh, it's just, I, I can't say good enough things about this album. I could go on for an hour talking about this album. But yes, yeah, suffice it to say, it is a very worthy winner of the crown for my number one favorite album of the entire decade of the 2010s. Well, there you have it, my list of my favorite albums of the 2010s. That was a lot of fun, and it was incredibly exhausting. But it was more fun than it was exhausting, honestly. So, so I just had so much fun bringing this list to you. And hopefully you guys have discovered uh, music that I can point you to that you will enjoy as much as I did. And by the way, if you guys want... I should have said this at the beginning of the video. If you guys would like me to go into any more depth about any of these albums in particular, let me know down in the comments and I can see if I can whip up a uh, reasonably length album review of it uh, for a video later on. 
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my end of the decade spectacular-ish. I had a whole lot of fun doing it, and I hope you had just as much fun, if not more, watching it. But anyway, that's it for this week, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and healthy out there, everyone. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.